Uh, Alex, good morning to you. A few moments ago, I saw on Chelsea's Twitter feed uh, a very fond farewell from them to Conor Gallagher, who's signed for Atletico Madrid. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this draws to an end one of the sagas of this transfer window. Conor Gallagher, as you say, signing a five-year deal with Atletico. He's already been pictured in training with his new teammates today. There was some doubt a week or so ago uh, whether this move would go ahead. But yeah, quite a classy statement, I think, from Chelsea, bearing in mind there's been a little bit of ill feeling, I think, during negotiation. They wish Connor all the best as he begins what they call a new chapter. He scored 10 goals in 95 games for the clubs. And he's actually been uh, associated with Chelsea for 18 years. So out with the old, in with the new. We know that Jao Felix is on his way to Stamford Bridge, signing a six-year contract with a year's option. And I think attention then will turn to a centre-forward, Victor Osiman, still very much in Chelsea's sights. What do you think, Danny? Do you think Chelsea will miss him? Do you think Gallagher will, will show out there what they're going to miss this season when he plays for Atletico? I think he'll add a steel energy. Pack. When he I'm a bit, I'm, he's a good player, for, and I think that moves. He, through the manager he's going to have who thrives on work ethic and organisation and tenacity, and he's got all of that. So it would be, be exciting for him. I think Chelsea have got enough in midfield to cover what he does. I think the performance of Lavia at the weekend was a huge positive probably the only positive for Chelsea on the weekend actually he's going to be a good player and they've got lots of other players in midfield so from a footballing point of view for Chelsea I don't think it's a a huge loss I think more the way they've dealt with it has been a little bit what's the word um amateurish but I think it's a great move for him I think it's a brilliant move for him. you think it's been amateurish or are you ready to defend your move I don't know what's amateurish about it what, well, what, just, what's just, amateurish about it? Just things like leaving his name off the pro, oh, what's and things like that. It's, it's, it's. I think there's a timing difference. I mean, every everybody just pet, little petty things. That's I right. think everybody. I mean, I didn't assume that he wasn't going to go to Atletico Madrid no, because everybody he came back why, from Atletico Madrid. Uh, yeah, it might have been just a communication issue. It might be, yeah. but it, there was, that was just the icing on the cake. There's been a few things, hasn't there? I think, just think it could have been dealt with a little bit better, but not from a I don't know, this thing about oh. Because he comes through the youth and because he's one of our own, we have to keep a player who we don't think is good enough to move us forward as a football club. I'm, I'm, it's all nonsense, that. OK, €42 million. Euros. Conor Gallagher joins up at Atletico Madrid. What's the situation with Ilkay Gundogan um, at Barcelona? But it appears not for much longer. Is that right, Alex? No, it looks like he's very much on his way back to, to Manchester City just a year after departing the Etihad. We know that Pep Guardiola was keen to keep him. Looks like he will be heading back there on a free transfer. We understand a one-year contract with an extra year's option. I think that's a good signing for Manchester City. We know how important he was for them first time around. Knows the club, obviously knows Pep's style of football. Hasn't really worked out for him in, in Barcelona, despite the fact he played a lot of games. So City getting active late in the window. They've also been mentioned this morning, Jim, uh, in regards to a player that you know from the SPL, uh, Kyogo, for a uh, at Celtic, we understand as a potential Manchester City target as they look to pep up their attack as well. Interesting. So, one time, uh, one time City player won the lot there. Simon heads out to Barcelona. Doesn't last. Uh, comes back here. I mean, you've always you've always pushed back on the fact that Barcelona have got problems behind the scenes. Uh, those being financial, but it would appear that Gundogan isn't going to get his wish and shine at Barcelona. That's why mm. he went. Yeah, no, I pushed it back against the characterisation that Barcelona was an existential crisis. Um, um, I, I don't think they didn't have their troubles, because clearly they did. But it's an interesting one. I, I think Gundogan left, if my recollection serves me correctly, because he wanted to, not because Pep Guardiola wanted him to leave. Mm. So he went... Uh, so it wasn't because Pep Guardiola, Pep Guardiola felt that his journey had finished at Manchester City. I think that the player felt there was an opportunity for me at Barcelona. I want to try something different. Um... And so, of course, Pep, with his relationship with Barcelona and his value of Barcelona, might have given him a pass for that mentality because he can't, can hardly love Barcelona and then denied the fellow an opportunity to want to go and play where somewhere where Pep managed and played himself. Yeah. So that probably took any of the rancor out of the conversation. And, and bringing him back, well, he's, he's a top-quality player and I'm not in the business of criticising the judgment of Pep Guardiola. Well, he's... Um, spoke to this guy last week at the uh, Premier League launch, Joachim Anderson of Crystal Palace. Uh, is he heading to Fulham? Is this now happening? Yeah, I think so, Jim. Uh, £30 million pound fee was agreed uh, late last night. Obviously, there's been a lot of conjecture about Mark Gay and several bids going in for him from Newcastle. I think in an ideal world, 
Palace wanted to keep both him and Anderson, so it's going to be interesting to see how this will impact on Newcastle's pursuit of Gay and Palace now with the Elise money, with the money they're going to get from Joachim Anderson. Uh, they're going to set about trying to bring in reinforcements themselves between now and next Friday. Uh, Maxence Lacroix at Wolfsburg, very much a player in their sights, and I would expect them to accelerate their interest in him now. But big loss, I think, Joachim Anderson. They were a really good partnership, those two, at the heart of the Palace defence last season. Is there anything in the Chalaba story going to Palace? I know, because he could be a good replacement for him. I know they've already signed the lad... Um... Riyad, who was at Betis last year. I know he's young, but he's quick, left-footed. He could come in. I'm, I'm assuming they bought him to play as well, knowing that the centre-halves might go. Yeah, absolutely. That They were interested in Chalabar at the start of the transfer window. I think at that stage, he wasn't particularly keen to make the move, but clearly his future lies away from Chelsea. He's another player who's training away from the first team. So I wouldn't be at all surprised, Danny, if they tease him for, for Chalabar. And I think there's going to be a few clubs at the table for him. In terms of Newcastle, I think with this sale of, of Anderson, it will just strengthen Palace's resolve and my understanding is they're now looking at alternative centre-back targets themselves. I mean, certainly last week uh, at the launch, uh, when I was talking with Anderson, he, he gave very little away uh, about the prospect of moving out of Palace. This was him. With a, your situation, because Palace fans, Fulham fans will want to know, hmm. where are you going to be playing? No, I'm a, I'm a Palace player. I have a two-year contract, so that's what I'm focusing on. But there is talk that you might move. I don't know anything about that. It's Carl Fentz then. But there's plenty about it, and it looks like he is going to go to Fulham. I mean, Simon, where does it leave them then? Steve Parrish and the rest then? Because if Anderson goes, and it looks like he's going, yeah. and Newcastle, uh, I'm, I've lost count, Alex, how many times they've bid for Mark Gahey. I mean, what happens if Gahey goes? Well, he goes if Palace allow him to go, first and foremost. So they can't trigger any release clauses or put any contractual scenarios in play he doesn't have one. I can only assume that Glasson doesn't fancy Anderson because it doesn't feel like much of a move for Palace because they bought him for 20-odd million quid. They're selling him for 30. He's been a successful acquisition. He's a good player. 28, so maybe they thought... Well, still, I mean, ultimately, still at 28 years of age, players are going for reasonably significant money. I know, so, but maybe... Well, you know Dougie better than us. I mean, he does a brilliant job there. And he's probably... If they speak to him and he says, look, he's 28, he's a good footballer, but he's probably... As quick I'm, as assuming, you... I'm assuming the manager doesn't fancy him. I mean, he played every game almost last season. Yeah, I, I get and that. And I know Glasner came in late. I get that. But clearly, if they wanted to, I mean, first of all, he's going to Fulham, which with due respect to Fulham is a sideways move. It's not an upwards move for the player. either. Well, it isn't. No, I know. Performance-wise. It's geographical. And economically. It? So you it's not... It's not it's, it's, it isn't if he's been lured away to Arsenal or somewhere of that significance. I know, he's, but we, he's, he's, he's going to live in Fulham. Croydon, Simon. Well, it's hard, I suppose he lives in Croydon. Um, <laughs> I knew he'd go but, there. But, but the point is, is that <laughs> it looks like it's hard. I, I remember having a player that I bought that Neil Warner just walked in and built in fancy. Didn't yeah. fancy him, just sold him. Just sold him to Stoke. And I was like, okay, well, I thought he was a mainstay, played for the previous manager. And if you want to sell him, you sell him. You're the manager. Yeah. So I, my reading of this is that Glasner's not that bothered about Anderson. But it is a strange one because he's a a good footballer. I'm assuming, yeah, that's what I think. Assuming no, he was good, he was more than decent for Denmark in the Euros. He's with the ball, he's one of the best. But yeah. you know, managers, if they don't oh, think yeah. if they don't play a certain way or they don't think they set it, you know, there will be an element of Glasner building this team around the players that he knows from other environments. I can only yeah. see it being his pace, but I don't see him as that slow. He's, okay. not, he's not super quick, but well, anyway. It appears that Anderson is out of there and we'll head across London to Fulham. Alex Crook, thank you very much indeed. In a moment, we'll talk tennis. And, and Simon, you'll be across this as well. Yannick said, Thank you. Uh, world number one player in the back of the Times this morning and other cross outlets to avoid drug ban after world tests. What's going on there? We'll look at that next. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.